Awesome. Hey guys, welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm Scott Ramp. And I'm Josh. And we're here to tell you, to usher you into the morning. This is the last uh, morning show of March. We'll be gone next week for spring break. We're doing spring flicks with the kids. We have 13 kids. It is full, so uh, don't bother signing of your kids. All right, so that's just a little thing there. But let's talk. Let's throw it into weather. I got a lot of show to talk about, and we're gonna kick things off with a little bit of that cold weather that's happening, but still gonna be hotter and hotter as the weeks go on into spring. 25 degrees currently, your high is going to be 54, it's going to be sunny today, so I'm going to use this opportunity to definitely chip away some of the ice in front of my garage, um, and you should too. Um, low 32, high 50 on Saturday with a 20% chance of rain. Sunday you're going to see 40% chances of showers, so you might want to um, get started on any outdoor activities this weekend or today. And then Monday you're going to have mostly sunny with highs into 51 degrees. So, got any big plans for the weekend? Uh, sleep, sleeping, walking, running. I'm going to go for a run. Nice. Yeah. And it's going to be such a beautiful day for it, for sure. Yeah. Yep. And it's not too hot, so you don't, like, oh yeah, like, die of heat stroke after you sweat so much. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about uh, MCPS. MCPS is on their third open house talking about boundaries for uh, kids attending school. So these are town attendance boundaries, just determining which kid deserves to go to which school based on where they live. And they're having open houses to uh, hopefully curve some of the concerns that some of the parents may have and what school they'll be going to. Um, some schools are filling up and in many ways are to adjust the boundary lines to is to change in which, wh which many ways could see siblings going to different elementary schools. Um, many times, uh, any enrollment changes and adjustments beyond that would have to communicate grievances to MCPS directly. Students attending one of the nine public elementary schools in the county may attend different school in the 2020-2021 school year. Many of the kids who are already currently enrolled in some of these schools already are, are, are considered grandfathered in, so they will not have to leave the school. Current students will not have to move. Um, and here is, uh, uh, basically if you go to uh, mcpsmt.org, you can find all the information about it. So here are the current boundary lines. As you can see here, you got Rattlesnake up here, you got Lowell, Paxton, and more. Um, Cold Springs, but this is an old map, just letting you guys know this is the current boundary line. And now I'm going to show you guys the proposed. And if you guys look closely at Franklin, the green, and Lowell, which is the kind of like the light um, bluish um, turquoise. There you go. Yep. You can see that um, many of that starts bleeding into uh, Rattlesnake and Franklin bleeds into some of Paxson's uh, district. That's the first proposal based on the estimated forecast of how many kids are in that area. And here's proposal number two where Franklin doesn't really change, um, Lowell doesn't really change, but you do notice that uh, Lewis and Clark and part of Chief Starler start bleeding into some of Russell Elementary. And then of course the, the last one is that Franklin goes and takes over part of Hawthorne and um, Lowell hasn't really changed, so this is kind of like the award map as well. The, uh, the goal for the school is to keep the kids within 450 to 500 kids per elementary school, and that's what they're trying to try to focus on for MCPS. So if you want to learn more, go to mcpsmt.org. Um, I believe, I don't know if they're going to be doing any more f open houses, and the changes on the maps strive to balance students uh, attending different schools and provide relief to schools that are currently over capacity. State news, Yellow, Yellowstone County is uh, public works, urges Yellowstone County residents to consider buying flood insurance right now uh, because it takes 30, 30 days for flood insurance to go into effect and by the time it goes into effect, the flood season will be in full force in Yellowstone and they're expecting it to be fairly bad flood season, especially with the amount of snowfall that's been falling in the state of Montana just this year. It seems to happen every five years. There's a, like an El Nino, that kind of deal. So just watch out for that. 20 to 25 percent of all flood claims occur outside high risk area. Uh, for more information to view the flood map or for help in the floodplain questions, contact Yellowstone County Public Works online at co.yellowstone.mt.gov slash floodplain. Or you can call them at 406-256-27 Three, five, that's Yellowstone County all the way east of Montana. But I'm also mentioning this too because it doesn't only just affect Yellowstone County. You got to understand that last year Orchard Homes got flooded and a lot of people were displaced out of their homes last year because of flooding. And we have more snow this year than we did last year. So just think about that when, um, as the snow starts to melt. Um, yeah, you just can't have it either way. It's like, oh, oh, thank God the snow's melting. Oh, God, yeah. the snow's melting. So it's kind of like that. Yeah, there's always a little yeah. bit of a downside to oh. So, um, 
for those of you who uh, want to keep uh, the race white, uh, apparently studies that link genetic markers with disease focus largely on white European populations and neglect other races and ethnicities. According to analysis published by the journal Cell on Thursday, the researchers argued that the lack of diversity in genomic studies harms our scientific understanding of the genetic underprinting of disease in all populations and exacerbates health care inequalities. So a lot of times they're asking you to diversify your genes, uh, and a lot of times it's a lot easier for, uh, you know, th the same thing can also happen with, like, um, passing on diseases genetically, because there's some ge genes that are, say, like, they're really good at processing cholesterol. There's some uh, genes that are really good about, like, preventing heart disease, so you have no history of heart disease in your family. Yeah. And this is uh, yeah. one of the things is that 78% oh. of all individuals, including uh, genomic studies, of disease up to 2018 were of European descent. 10% Asian, 2% African, 1% Hispanic, and less than 1% of all other groups. The, uh, uh, the uh, study points to um, PCSK9, a gene important for regulating cholesterol. Studies muta studying mutations that occur in West African populations provide extra insight into the underlying biology and lead to a new class of drugs that benefit people of all races. Yeah, you know. So like, explore your sexuality and spread the genes around yeah. f of all people. Yeah, I'm like mostly Irish and German, and I hate my genes. My genes are terrible. <laughs> That's just uh, um, a personal, a vanity. Thing. I know. Well, it's not like I, I look okay. It's just like uh, everything, uh, like I'm probably going to have heart disease in the future just because like. Because there's an old, so there's an old proverb that um, – Americans uh, who eat butter will have a heart attack, and then French people who have butter will never have a heart attack. Yeah. No matter what. So I and then. I was French. Yeah, and then um, in one in, in one case they said it's like oh they switched to margarine, but you're still gonna have heart heart attack regardless of margarine or butter. Oh yeah, margarine is still terrible. So that that was kind of like the proverb was like what? eat whatever you want, you're still gonna have a heart attack. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But of course, you know, get regular doctor checkups mm -hmm. if you have a history of heart disease or a history of cancer, because if you have more than one family member who's had cancer, you always have to always have the double check for that kind of stuff in the future, because it is part of your gen genetic makeup, something that you definitely pass on. But also, if you mix genes with people who have no history of cancer, it could also help curve the amount of cancer rate in your family from then on. So that's what they're urging. You can look up this study. It was just produced the other day by the uh, study journal from Cell. Nice. Cool. So that's what's happening in your news today. I got a bunch of new programs airing on MCAT. The weekend is a, uh, is filled with a bunch of new programs from Wilderness Issues Lecture Series, Global Public Health, and um, Part 6 of Ballet Beyond Borders, which used to be the Vienna International Ballet Experience here in Missoula. So without further ado, here is a little bit of tap dancing. <laughs> known for for people who know it at all. A lot of people just know it by name. Most people have heard the name Borneo, but for people who know about it, they think of wildlife in general. It's known for a lot of biodiversity, a whole lot of amazing animals. Kingfishers and hornbills, monitor lizards. This is a, a relative of a crocodile and then a bearded pig here. Most of these pictures, I think there are only a couple that weren't taken by myself or somebody in our traveling party while on one of these two trips. So lots and lots of things that are going on in this area, wildlife-wise, but primarily what people know Borneo for are monkeys. This is a distillery, all right? And this is the distillery of the studio practice. And it could be the distillery of your research as well. What do we share? We share art students. Anybody? Yeah, we share culture, right? Culture and society. That's one of the main ingredients, all right? Then you take the ingredient of your research. In this case, it's art. 
Um, so when students come into an art class or they're interested in art, I said, you're the one that chose it. It could be brain surgery, it could be range, it could be, you know, mediation, it could be anything, all right? It kind of talks about my non-traditional Montana born and raised upbringing as it relates to wilderness in the wild because, you know, my dad wasn't a hunter. I'm not part of some tradition being handed through generations of going out and procuring wild meat and all that stuff. And there was a time in my life when I probably felt a little, you know, inadequate compared to all of my friends who would talk about, oh yeah, you know, because like, like when I was in high school, out in the parking lot, every third pickup had a gun rack with a rifle on it. And it all day long at school, and, and because when school let out, and there were times we would even get out early during hunting season, because everybody was going hunting. And now, you know, one truck shows up with a, even a gun rack, probably, and it's a four alarm fire. So it's a totally different environment. So this essay kind of talks about how I came to appreciate being out in wild places um, that, you know, maybe is a little different than, than some other folks. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some movies that are coming out. It's time for a little bit of that pre-critic. Shazam! Uh, hey, guess what? There's a movie that comes out, and it's from Jordan Peele. Movie. Comes yet another horror film that follows a family as they go to the beautiful city of Santa Cruz on vacation, only to be attacked by their counterparts. Here's the thing about these kind of movies. Usually they have, you know, they defeat their go doppelganger in the end. That usually always happens in the movie, but then there's always the, the yeah. tease where it's just like, but did they really? It's more just like, you know, when it's like, oh, thank God you're alive. And then they look at the camera and it's like, <laughs> yeah. and that's basically the movie. So it's, it's kind of like one of those movies that's like happy ending, question mark. Hey. And, um, yeah. Yeah, and that's Jordan the Peele's really good at directing. Though. Yeah. Really. Okay. The next movie, although this movie doesn't come out until next week, uh, uh, we won't be here. So it, here we go. Uh, what starts out as a short, uh, kind of a feature length animated movie, maybe like a, an hour and 15 minutes overall. Uh, yeah. uh, yeah, you know, it's a CGI extravaganza, but it's yeah. mostly like it's considered live action because they have live people in there. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about Disney's Lion King. Don't get me started on that. All right, so um, I'm not sure about you, but I'm looking forward to this live action Aladdin where Will Smith oh, reprises yeah. his role as Hitch. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah no, no, so he's, please he's uh, go, Shazam. don't let them have the crows in this Shazam. movie. I'm just saying, don't let them have the crows in this Dumbo movie. Remember the crows from oh, Dumbo? Uh huh. Yeah. Don't let them have this in the uh, movie. Don't and do maybe that. I'll go see it, but as long as it doesn't have the crows That's in the Dumbo movie, okay I'm anymore. I'm perfectly cool. Also, uh, Danny DeVito's in it. Yeah, he's the so, he's the he's a small town ringmaster who gets um um honey potted by <laughs> yeah <laughs> by uh, Michael know. Keaton's character who's just like my thing's bigger and better, and we uh, torture animals. Yeah, blah, blah, you know, blah. it definitely is going to paint the circus kind of like in a negative light in terms of like torturing animals, which you know. Sure. Yeah, but they do look terrifying. It does, and yeah. like you take your mom, you take the uh, the elephant's mom away from the Dumbo, and it's like, oh god, it's so, so it's going to be it's going to be one of those heart wrenching movies. Anyways, moving on, this story of a hotel that gets wrecked by terrorism um, is called Hotel Mumbai. Uh, let me guess, this movie does the old switcheroo and makes people think, you know. I never thought of it that way. Only Hollywood could do that. Anyways, a terror plot unfolds. People die, and ma the main cast gets rescued in an unconventional ways that make them a little less racist. But I'm only uh, basing this off of all movies. Yeah. Moving Sounds on. Good. These are some quickens. Um, Mard Ko Dard Nahin Hata. So when a man is pushed to the edge, he must fight and fight and fight. Foreign fine films can be creative, but they lack a plot. Jason Dragged across concrete. I'm assuming this is a dirty cop type movie. When push comes to shove, forces a man to take up arms in a fight for, for sur survival. Vince Vaughn. Uh, uh, Mel Gibson. Uh, moving on. Uh, moving on. Ramen shop. When you can't go to Flavortown, you can always go home. And in this movie, we see a young man go home to a ramen shop to find his own flavor home. Oh, I love ramen. You know, I'll Sunset. A movie about a girl whose love life is synced to a sunset where she waits for this movie to be over. Uh, triple Threat. It's a movie about a rich guy who thinks his family is untouchable. Are untouchable. Wrong. This movie shows yet another bodyguard pushed to the limit as he's fighting a movie from China. Taken. Yep. Is that Taken? I don't know. It's, it's the bodyguard. 
but uh. like with more fighting and, and like it's it's like a kung fu Kevin Costner, but without Kevin Costner Chinese oh, okay. film. So I don't know. The, the, there's a bunch of movies that you may or may not see. A lot of them have limited release. They are mostly in the foreign market, but I'm just doing a lot of quickums because there's just a lot of movies that are coming out, um, and I'm going to miss a lot of them next week because we'll be off the air. All right. Do a, so, in followed in suit from Pre-Critic, I also have a Flagship Friday video of the week uh, featuring some of the kids at uh, one of the schools here in town. This isn't this fun? Okay, we're going to draw something and you guess what it is. Alright, dinner's ready. Everyone okay, sit at the table. Daddy. No, and I came over. And I came over. Whoa, whoa, what was that? Nothing. She it didn't look herself. like nothing. This looks like nothing. That looked like something. No, she fell out by herself. No, sis. I watched. You pushed her. No, I didn't. Well, maybe you should go, um, maybe you should go to bed without dinner. There's nothing in this dinner anyways. Oh, it's invisible! This is gonna stay! It's invisible steady! Even if you think it's invisible, I can still feel it, and I'm going to tell sis to go tell dad. You're still using her to tell on me? I don't mind if I tell on her. Well, I did. I'm sorry. Ugh, she always cries. Cry, baby. Are you serious? That's not even helpful. All right, I want to hear from you exactly what happened after you went out to give your sister spaghetti. Well, I went out there to give her some leftovers, and she literally splashed it all over me. I don't see anything. It's invisible. It's your own creation. I don't know anything about that. Well, she was about to dump spaghetti on my head, and I had to do something. So I defend myself. I didn't try to get it on her. You know, I think I want to hear from her. It was both of them. They were just fighting. So who was the one who uh, spilled the spaghetti? Grounded. Whatever. Don't walk away. Go to your room. I'm tired of eating your stupid spaghetti anyway. <laughs> I just want. We want to be nice and bring you dinner. My dad said I can't have dinner. I was the meanest sister. Hi, my name is Sophie. I was the youngest sister. Hi, I was Alyssa. Wait, hi, <laughs> I'm Alyssa, and I was the camera person. And I'm Scott. So, I was the dad. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, guys. That was a movie, and now we're going to talk about some city council. We're going to bring it back. We're going to calm down, and now we're going to talk about this. Oh, I'm calm. Oh, we're totally calm. We're, we're going to have to be so calm. calm. 
All right, guys. So I did public works last night. Um, I, I didn't actually do it. I just watched it. I'm going to tell you exactly what I learned from uh, public works. Here's my city council report. The Montana Department of Transportation requires the city to ride an ADA route for from the north side of Higgins Avenue Bridge to Karis Park as a, a condition of the MDT Higgins Avenue Bridge Project. So the whole idea, you know, Americans with Disabilities Act um, is required before the stairs um, currently attached to the bridge um, should be removed. So they're going to remove a uh, portion of the stairs or the stairs from the bridge because they're going to be some construction of the bridge 2020, 2021, uh, because they're going to replace the whole Higgins Bridge. It's going to be a huge undertaking and everything. Yeah. So, I mean, of course, it's probably be like half the bridge and then they'll diverge everything to like two lanes and then they'll just do the yeah, whole thing like that. that's what they did with Russell. Right? Nope, that's what they're doing with Russell. They're yeah. going to build half the bridge now. They'll tear down the old bridge, good riddance, and then they're going <laughs> to... And then they're going to use the new part, half of the bridge there while they're building another bridge right next to it. Nice. Yep. And then, of course, they are going to put, like, a pedestrian footbridge underneath at some point. The thing that they have right now is, like, a temporary bridge for it as well. I'm kind of worried about it because as soon as it really melts, there's gonna, the waters are just going to rise like crazy. Yeah. I don't know if that little footbridge area where the people are putting you know, their construction you know, equipment what is. What I would worry most about is uh, the people who float down the river. When it too soon? When they float uh, down the river too yeah, soon? Yeah, just in general. Like, if they're floating down the river during construction, that could lead to some complications, yeah. I feel like. I like uh, every time Reggie Watch comes to town, he makes a joke about floating the river, but he's here during the winter time. Yeah. He's like, yo, are you guys go float down the river this week? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's oh, awesome. Oh, I saw him this, <coughs> this winter. Yeah, I did too. Oh, you were there? Yeah, I was there. Oh, cool. Yeah, I showed up, uh, and then I left. <laughs> then I yeah. was like, yeah, it was funny. It was great. Yeah. Uh, he does a lot of really good stuff, and yeah. it's a lot of – it feels improv, but then there's a lot of cool things that he kind of refers to in the last couple of years if you've seen a couple of his – like his oh, Birdman yeah. bread – Rant. Birdman bread. Yep. Okay, Kevin Slovart, Developmental Services, says that this uh, needs to happen. They need to remove the thing. Uh, they need to remove the, uh, um, the staircase by the bridge. And so this is what he had to say about this project. Um, we go to construct our um, Higgins Avenue bridge replacement project, and we widen the deck on the surface of that bridge and we remove the stairs on the west side of that structure in order to widen um, that bridge. Those stairs um, were originally purchased and installed by MRA and so those are basically the city stairs. So when those are removed that we need to um, provide a, a, an ADA path to um, to basically Karis Park from the bridge deck down to Karis Park. All right, so that, you know, it, it makes sense. Uh, and a lot of times uh, part of the uh, um, – and basically, uh, before I get into more about ADA, I'm going to talk about uh, Kevin shows exactly what's going to happen with the project. With the streets, you know, you got Patty Street, you got Front Street, and you got Higgins, and there's a map of the uh, – you know, like regulations of how, I don't know why I said regulations, but here, here's a, like a map of what's going to be done and the colors in red. So this is kind of the, the overview, um, an aerial of an overview. So the, the existing stairs over here where my cursor is, and the access really needs to be, um, you know, along either route, but we chose this route because this green is already ADA compliant. Um, so then the improvements that we need to make to make this an accessible route to Karis Park from the bridge deck um, includes improvements on this um, section of Patty that's really the, the access drive in front of the, the, the uh, driveway approach to the, the bank structure. All right, so a lot of construction is going to be need to take place. Um, they want to make it a lot easier for people who are ADA, Americans with a Disability Act, requires that all sidewalks I um, and businesses have access to all abilities from those who struggle with stairs to folks who can't even move their legs. But they would only make the sidewalks ADA compliant when they needed to be replaced or repaired. So it was kind of like, it was like, you need to replace the sidewalks. It's like, oh, we'll, repl we'll replace it when time comes. And that's what they kind of said to them. And it was like, yeah. oh, really? Oh, thanks, I guess. So it was kind of it – was, it was very interesting to just kind of see how it worked out. But that's just a little history of ADA compliance and all that stuff. Uh, Kevin, um, he also talks about access to Karis Park from Higgins in front and the Patty areas. So he gives another um, 
a close-up view of the of the parking garage structure that's next to the uh, bank. Here's here's the the improvements that we're making um, to the sidewalk to get to the the currently deficient width sidewalk in the bank structure itself, and then through the bank structure, and then on the other side of it, over here, um, make improvements to this ramp, and then, and then uh, essentially that's that's a project. So, um, all right, and that's pretty much all the quotes I got for you guys as well. Um, so far, the West Stairs and the Higgins Bridge will be taken down and replaced later on the Higgins Bridge has been replaced. So it's kind of like it's kind of like they take it out, they'll do some construction, make a couple curb and sidewalk improvements for ADA compliance, um, and overall they're going to be kind of like putting taking out a lot of the stairs next to the Higgins Bridge. You know, like those stairs that you have access to mm -hmm. uh, from the bridge to Karis Park and all that stuff. So yeah. pretty much all those are going to be gone. You know, those uh, turquoise. <laughs> stairs that they had there for a while yeah because they're going to basically widen the bridge a little bit more to be more compliant with bikers and pedestrians yeah that'll be good yeah it's hard to get across the bridge it can be right especially now. if you like People. if you're just walking like it's just like it's like basically one for one person and then you always have to be like oh excuse me stop, 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 yeah excuse exactly me. and I that's always the case if you're walking down higgins bridge yeah also that'll be interesting to see how they make the pathway from the bridge to Karis Park ADA compliant. Yeah. Well, a lot of it, what they're doing is they're uh, taking advantage of the parking garage structure. So a lot of times they'll have to go around that way. I'm yeah. not sure if they're going to be able to uh, improve the, uh, you know, the the, um, the staircase with the, the fish. Yeah. I don't know if they're going to be able to make that more ADA compliant. I really doubt it. I Honestly. think the whole idea is that they want people who are ADA to park in that parking structure, you know, with all the handicapped parking that they have there, yeah. and then go from there, just kind of curve out of there and go around to. You, you know what Karis I Park. think would be a good idea is an elevator. Yeah. Just straight up put an elevator there. Um, maybe like just to prevent people from like sleeping in it. Yeah. You know, make it like or time or heck, regulated. you can even um like if you have a long enough ramp, you just make it like a fairly long wide ramp that kind of goes from Higgins down to Karis yeah. Park and, well, and then everyone can and then everyone can just go on it yeah that's true yeah. you know because a lot of I mean lifts you know they, they're there's kind of like have you ever like seen the lift and how they work you know like you know there are people over there and it's like zzz, and then you're like watching and you're just like it, you kind of yeah. you kind of feel like you're just like well it takes a lot of time but yeah like, you know like I, I feel bored be, for people who have to go on lifts I think it might be safe yeah but you know that's up to them yeah. to decide Yep, and so yeah, like that's kind of what's happening there. Um, land use and planning. They talk more about the Hillview Crossing. I don't have any uh, video for you guys to show you because there's not much to talk about. It's mostly just like they're meeting, and greeting, and talking and stuff like that. But you're more than welcome to watch any of those meetings and more by logging on to ci.missoula.mt.us. Uh, yeah, do it. Yep, cool. Check it out. Yeah, check it out. It's just you know permits, access, pay your water bills, all that crap. All right, <laughs> let's talk about uh, some new. I have a couple new art clips. And they're going to be expired by, uh, by the time we come back. So these are the last chances I'll get to show these. And also the first time I'll show them. So nice. first and last. But it you have until viewing. you have until April um, to see these art installations at the Gallery of the Visual Arts. So there's two different uh, art clips. There's too much art at the Gallery of Visual Arts. But this is your chance to kind of see what they have with the uh, MFA kind of uh, gallery show. So you can check out all these uh, up and coming artists from the Gallery of, Digital Art, Gallery of the Visual Arts. It's in the Social Science Building at the University of Montana. So, without further ado, here's this. And when we come back, we'll have events. <laughs>
just talking some bridge talk. We like uh, I was just telling uh, Josh that the the bridge at Russell it is slated to end like finish I think fall of this year overall, and I think the they open the new portion of the bridge by uh, spring at some point. Yeah, that would be maybe nice. early summer. It really depends. If you if you just drive by there, you can be like, yeah, that looks like it might take a little while. Yeah, if you can drive by there. <laughs> well, the ni- the days are getting long. nicer, so uh, and the roads are getting a little bit a little bit better for that, but which is pretty good. Um, if you've got a chance, uh, you know, by those apartments, uh, by Will, where Neil lives, um, by uh-huh. the Salvation Army, they have that yeah. new underpass now that go. They have a, like a bike trail that goes under yeah. Russell Road. Yeah. That's really cool. I really like that. So get a chance if you get a chance to. Uh, drive or ride your bike near Russell home resource you can go underneath that bike path that goes under Russell so that's pretty cool so you can check that out all right guys uh let's talk about some events I'm just going to breeze through a lot of these events tiny tales and story time is going to be at Missoula Public Library starting at 10 30 a.m this morning they usually do it all weekend long but this is a good way for your kids to get engaged with reading it's a good family activity between parents and their young children uh, Missoula Indoor Sports Arena, Missoula Gymnastics, and Roots Eckridge Sports Center is another great place for some indoor fun. It, it's getting warmer outside, so a lot of these places are definitely not great to go to because you have all these outdoor fun and activities that, that are going to be popping up out of nowhere. But then again, it's always nice to have a padded environment, uh, basically a child-proof environment like these to have your kids jump and play without hurting themselves too bad. And yeah, so I'm just, that's just my pitch. So um, you guys want to learn about sharks? Changing the subject. Yeah. Um, Spectrum Discovery Center is yeah. going to be talking about sharks starting at 11 a.m. today. They have a bunch of uh, things in their discovery bench and more. So you can check all that out at Spectrum, which is at 812 Tool Avenue. And it's 350. And if you're under three, you get in free. Ooh. And it's a great nonprofit. Um, it's uh, regulated through the uh, University of Montana and it engages kids in science. And they've been around for about 10 years now. I think they just celebrated their 10 year anniversary not so long ago. Nice. Cribbage and Bridge. Missoula Senior Center, you're going to destroy some old people at Cribbage and Bridge, go, <laughs> go to the Missoula Senior Center pretty much every day at around uh, 1230-ish. Um, oh, yeah. Endeavor and uh, Lego and board games, 2.30 and 3.30. At 2.30, they're going to have some board games and some activities. Um, it's not a drop-off event. Parents and kids are, are basically um, encouraged to show up and learn about what Endeavor is all about. And Endeavor is, um, by my interpretation, is a um, PTA without the T in terms of school. So a lot of times it's like a, it's a parental education homeschool co-op, yeah. which I think it's a pretty interesting idea. And I think um, you know it, it definitely gives a lot more power to the parents and how their uh, kids have education, but also building um, social, um, better social qualities amongst themselves and stuff like that. Because a lot of times when you're homeschooled and you have a parent who kind of shelters you too much, you don't have the uh, chance to get out. It really depends. It really depends upon the family. Yeah. Every every homeschool family is different. Um, teen Riders Group, 3.30 p.m. at Missoula Public Library. Um, from 3.30 to 5.30, uh, teens can improve their writing skills and y- you get a critique some of your writing skills. So if you, if you want to be a writer, if you want to get into writing and do all that stuff, this is the perfect place for you to join. Nerf on the turf. I think you guys might like this. It's a Nerf on turf. It's, uh, it, it happens at the Minnesota Indoor Sports Arena. It's basically Nerf guns. It's basically a Nerf gun oh, fight. Nice. Yeah. And they're going to do this uh, Fridays from 4 to 9 p.m., Saturdays from 6 to 9 p.m., and Sundays 5 to 8 p.m., and it's individual or bring your friends to join in the fun. And you can more information about this, you go to MissoulaIndoor.com slash nerf. Um, EMT Refresher. This is uh, for anybody who uh, um, wants to work in flight uh, Fight or flight emergency medical educators. It's a 24-hour basic EMT refresher in Missoula, Montana, where they meet requirements for maintaining both Montana EMT license and in our EMT certificate uh, certification. Oh, geez. Oh, you got it. Oh my God. Uh, certifications. Um, recently, <laughs> I just got to push right through. <laughs> I really do. It's like if I think about it too much, I'll never um, pronounce any words. So it's. Um, 40 hours of adopted the National Continuing Competency Program, NCCP, which were, um, no, I'm way off. Okay, forget about it. EMT, refer- EM- EMT refresher course <laughs> is going to happen. I'm just going to just blah, 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 <laughs> yada, yada, yada. There's a lot of stuff, and it's part of the fight or flight emergency medical educators, and you can look that up online as well. You go to MissoulaEvents.net for the links. 
uh, winter field ecology. So this is a big deal because this is going to be like a big trip. It's $200, which include meals. It's a two-night lodging in the Beck Homestead, transportation during the course, and snowshoes. Uh, learn about the adaptation wildlife species in Swan Valley use to survive in cold winter months in northwest Montana through a mix of informal lectures and plenty of time in the field. They will explore conditions faced by plants, birds, and animals, and humans in the swan and investigate the various strategies for survival used by species who call this place home. Family Friendly Friday at the Top Hat. Top Hat Lounge every, uh, every Friday from 6 to 8 p.m. The Top Hat presents Family Friendly Friday, a time where parents and their kids can socialize, listen to music, eat great food, and have some fun. So. Yeah, it's just they do it every Friday. I totally missed last Friday because it was the uh, girls' rock camp from uh, Zach. Oh, yeah. And they had their performance last Friday. And I totally, oh. completely just forgot to mention it because um, they don't actually mention it a lot of times on Missoula events because it was just like it was a blurb, you know? Yeah. Because yeah. You know, it, it was a past camp because they advertised that they're going to be playing that day. They don't actually – posted on Missoula events for that day, so I, I messed that up. All right, clear skies at night, planetarium's delight, starting tonight at the University of Montana, 6 p.m. and at 7.30 p.m. with Diane um, Friend, Diane Friend, yeah, that's the person's name, um, Starstruck, how the activity and evolution of stars affect the planets, and you can check all that out at the University of Montana. Um, and that is pretty much it for your Friday deals. There's a bunch of other things happening as well for Friday here, some of your late night events. Chase Rice is going to be at the Wilma Theater. It's going to be country music. Um, Bear Bait Dance is going to do words. It's their last weekend to check out their contemporary dance. Um, there's going to be a rap battle at Union no Ballroom. Way. And it's a hip-hop fundraiser, so wonderful. 406 is going to be country music at the Sunrise Saloon, full-grown band is going to be at Union Club. So a lot of things happen in the Union Club. You can go downstairs, you go upstairs to the Union Hall Ballroom and listen to some rap, or go downstairs and listen to some um, miscellaneous jam music oh, yeah. to dance to. Dude, I'm going to be at that rap battle. Right? Oh, I got and uh, you can totally, I mean, the Union Hall is for pretty much all ages. A lot of times because it's KG FM, yeah. and that's their, uh, that's the kind of like the space that they have, and they have a residency for a lot of things. And it's a fundraiser, too. Um, they're also having a free cycles event happening on Saturday, and I'll talk about more about that after this and then actually when we come back i'm going to throw it to josh and you can play some music after this next art clip which is from the gallery of the visual arts and this is uh the second half of the gallery of visual arts so without further ado here's this and when we come back josh is going to take over okay
awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Josh. <coughs> your thanks. Yep. Winter markets are happening for your Saturdays. Um, leading up into the farmer's market, which will probably be happening in May, so you want to check out for those. But if you guys are more interested in doing some winter markets, uh, doing some kind of farmer's markets, meet some um, local um, – local uh buy local kind of deal type stuff and you're interested in all that kind of deals um winter market is again museum senior center orchard home is at um the red barn off of reserve street um flying out of tradition mixed media with mrs sanders um they'll explore different surface uh treatment for your fired clay not glazes but paint see what uh outcomes are possible when you break from tradition and this is open to adults dealing with illness and loss including caregivers and this happens from 10.30 to about 12.30 p.m. at the uh, Living Arts of Montana. Trucker Kids at Traveler's Rest, uh, they're talking about traditional games. And the cool thing about uh, Trucker Kids is it happens at Traveler's Rest, and it happens from about 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. And the part of this event is a game of intuition and careful observation traditionally played by children of various Native American tribes in this area. Craft your own games game set to take home and test your new skills in a rock in fist tournament to win a prize. So this is a uh, free activities geared towards kids aged five to 10 and their families. And they always accept donations to Travelers Rest so they can keep these kind of events happening to educate the youth about history in Montana. Uh, tree pruning workshop. Hey, are you, tr are you pruning that tree right? Yeah. Probably not. Tree pruning oh. workshop, <laughs> workshop is going to be ha happening at Orchard Gardens. I believe that's at Orchard Homes Red Barn once again. Um, so join the Mud Project in Garden City Harvest to learn the skills that you need to efficiently prune your trees and save yourself the expense of calling in a landscaper and arborist. Whether you want to clean out dead branches, increase your fruit production, or just create a more visibly pleasing tree or shrub, Mud Workshop's instructor Mark Vander Meer will teach how to do it yourself the right way. And also, just so you guys know, if you're ever planting a tree, the one thing that you never do is you pat down the earth. Oh. You never pat down the earth. Oh, okay. You're supposed to leave the soil fairly loose because well, yeah, otherwise, it to be breathable. yeah, you want it to breathe. Yeah. And most people um, didn't understand that. And they do have uh, tree planting deals with the Urban Forestry Department at the, uh, the city of Missoula. You can always look for that. You can always volunteer with that. They plant a bunch of new trees, and they always need help pe uh, pruning some of the uh, old uh, dying trees in the downtown Missoula area since – um, that the biggest deal that you guys, I don't know, I, I, I always repeat this, maybe once every couple months, but um, all the trees in the, um, the Missoula, especially in the university district, are 20 years past their expiration date because they have a natural lifespan, and it's usually about 60 years, and they were planted back in the 60s. So they're kind of past, <laughs> past due, and a lot of trees are dying in that area. And um, the Urban um, Forestry Department is taking up uh, – chances to do this if you pay them they'll get on it right away but if you don't it'll be on the list and you know how long lists can be plant some trees yep so you can look up more information we go to ci.missoula.mt.us um, let's talk about something else now okay. mcat saturday drop-ins every single saturday from 1 to 5 p.m your kid age 9 to 13 years of age can come on down and do some stop animation some live action and just learn everything they need to know about making a, a fun creative video yeah. every saturday from 1 to 5 p.m and it happens pretty much this weekend and next weekend, regardless of spring break. And we'll also be doing spring flicks next week, um, which is closed. You can't sign up. <laughs> just to drive the point. Home. I know, I, I know, I know. I just Keep like. Your kids up. I know we have 13 kids. It's plenty. We got plenty of kids. Ooh, yeah, got it's great. It's gonna be wonderful. It's gonna be great. Children. It's gonna be a great camp. Um, open figure drawing. New collaboration with Zach. Um, Missouri Museum. It's funny. I'm talking about kids, and now I'm actually t almost like talking about 18 and up. Uh, event. Yeah, it's know. new drawing. You gotta draw somebody who's in the nude. And this in collaboration with the Zootown Arts Community Center, uh, draw from live models twice monthly at the MAM and second and fourth Saturdays um, and at the Zach. And of course, the Zach will host the first and third Saturdays as well. And so, yeah, that's what's happening. So I believe that this Saturday is probably the fourth Saturday. So I believe it's gonna be at the MAM. You can always check online and look at your calendar to see which one it's gonna be at. But you can always call the Missouri Art Museum for more information. Fickle, free cycles, uh, La Band Fickle, 
at Free Cycles. It's five dollars at the door with supporting local musicians, um, music from seven to ten p.m. A fun night of community engagement and merrymaking with a unique opportunity to witness music from L.A. and Missoula. So it's going to be like a mixture of different music and different bands happening at the um, Free Cycles. And Free Cycles yeah. is kind of like the place to be if you're like a college bro. Not really a bro. Maybe college, just like college chill guy, like a chill, a chill guy. I feel that. Yeah, I'm, it's, it's like it's like that. a chill kind of place to be. I'm yeah. that minus the college part. Um, Usually, a lot of college kids like going to free cycles. I see that a lot. Where is free cycles? And exactly. so basically, people who wear a lot of plaid. Oh. Um, yeah, and have beanies on year round. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm, so that's what you can expect to see. I don't want to say hipster. <laughs> oh. Well, oof. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Sorry about that. You, Laura, sorry. you're going to have to bleep hipster out. I said it again. <laughs> cool person. Yeah, oh, cool. Yeah, totally. <laughs> All right, so you can find out more about these events and more by logging on to MissoulaEvents.net. Hey, what's happening in here in Missoula? <laughs> this is it. Go to MissoulaEvents.net to find out more information about. Look at this. What the heck? What, what, what? Hey, Dang. Josh, how do I find out what's going on in Missoula? Ass. MissoulaEvents.net. Totally, dude. All right, so now that you know, and knowing is half the battle. <laughs> That's dumb. All right, so let's what talk about some – oh, yeah. Okay, so if you guys are interested in learning more about MCAT, um, you can log on to MCAT.org. We do orientation every Wednesday. You must RSVP. Um, and also, I want to make a quick announcement that MCAT will be changing our hours starting in April. Um, MCAT will be closed next week, um, but it will be open from 3 to 7, Tuesday through uh, Friday next week. But then starting in April, our new open hours are going to be from 11 to 5 p.m. in April going into the fall. So. Yeah, just check out for those hours, and if you have an appointment, you can always sign up for an appointment. If you need a studio at a certain time, you can always sign um, up, but, you know, you need to give us some warning, too. Yeah. So that's just kind of what we're going to be doing. We're trying to condense. Our public hours aren't – there's not too, much, too many people come to MCAT who are making things, so there's no point in keeping it open for people who just use our internet. Anyways, moving on. Pretty much. Yeah. That's what I do. That sounds, that sounds a little bad, but – That's the only reason I'm here, Scott, is to use your Wi-Fi. Oof mean. All right, if you want to learn more information about Wake Up Missoula, you can Google me, or you can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. Uh, so nice to read you right out twice. Um, you can find me on YouTube, Facebook, and the Twitter, and all that and more. Hey, Josh. Yeah. Show's done. Do you want to wrap us up? Yeah, dude. Oh, totally, dude. All right, thanks for joining me, and for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph. And I am playing...